I have a problem. I love multitasking on my computer, but my desk Bruh. is way too small for a second monitor. And constantly switching between windows is so inefficient. So I did what any sane person would do. I built a 5 inch monitor using only parts I had on hand, instead of just buying one on Amazon for like $50. Hey everyone, I'm Corey and you're watching CF Builds. Today we're going to be building this miniature monitor for my PC. Spoiler alert, not everything went to plan in this build, so stay tuned and enjoy. You know, it's funny how the best ideas often come out of nowhere. One day, my friend hit me up on Discord. Hey bro, you wanna play some balloons? Hell yeah! Of course I wanted to play, but here's the catch. I was also in the middle of designing something in Fusion. You know that moment when you're really focused on something and nothing's stopping you? Yeah, that was me. I really wanted to finish it by the end of the day, so I compromised. I played with my friend while tabbing back and forth between the game and Fusion. Not the most efficient solution, but hey, it worked. Then out of nowhere, I had this light bulb moment. I remembered I had this old untouched Raspberry Pi display just sitting around in a drawer somewhere. I bought it years ago for a project and I never even used it. One of the first issues I ran into is that this is a touchscreen, but surprise surprise, it isn't compatible with Windows, so there's no point in having it. Now I could just leave the touch layer on, but it has an anti-glare finish that adds a bit of haziness over the image. So I'm going to risk it all and attempt to remove it, hopefully without breaking anything. I had to cut the ribbon cables for the touchscreen, since the circuit board is glued to the LCD panel, and I can't get to the connector. Using a heat gun and razor blade, I carefully started prying the glass touch layer away from the display, and it was going pretty well, until it wasn't. So much for not breaking it. Oh well, the LCD panel still seems to be intact, so no harm done. I just have to make sure to blow off all of the glass dust to make sure it doesn't dig into the panel. Since the display connects using HDMI, I needed to find a way to connect it to my computer using USB. Luckily, I have a stockpile of old HDMI to USB adapters in one of my drawers, and it just so happens that this one is perfectly sized for this project. So I proceeded to remove the HDMI adapter from its enclosure so that I can take measurements that I can use in Fusion to model an enclosure for the monitor. I took measurements of all the components and came up with a relatively simple design in Fusion. After finishing the design, I printed all the parts on my brand new Bamboo Lab A1. Once all of the parts were done phasing into existence, I test fit everything together, only to realize that it was actually really boring looking and I absolutely hated the way it looked. So I made a decision that would totally change the course of this build and stress me out to the point that I almost gave up on the whole project. That decision? A simple wooden bezel. See, I recently got into the hobby of woodworking, so I have basically no experience whatsoever aside from a few small jigs that I made. That being said, I make terrible financial decisions, so I should have all the tools that I need to make a decent looking wood bezel with rounded corners. Or so I thought. So I printed a template that I could use with my router table jig to cut out the shape of the bezel. But first, I needed to source a thin enough piece of wood for the bezel. I didn't have anything that thin in my scraps bin, so I decided to use this piece of an old drawer front. This ended up being one of the biggest mistakes I made during this project. In order to make this piece thin enough to use, I made an extremely dangerous cut on my table saw since I don't own a thickness planer. Luckily, I managed to keep all of my fingers. Finally, with this thin piece of hard wood, I can finally start shaping it into the bezel for my mini monitor. So I'm just going to shut up now and let you watch how it played out. Spoiler alert, it did not end well.
mother <laughs> See, here's the thing. You can't buy experience. It's just one of those things you have to learn. But sometimes learning can be frustrating. That's all right. I'll just try again, making sure to be more cautious. Also, rather than wasting my time tracing out the template, I stuck it to the piece using some double-sided tape, as I'm gonna need to do this anyways once I take it to the router table. So once again, I'm gonna be quiet, and let's see how it turns out. So, as it turns out, the wood I chose was just way too brittle for what I'm trying to do. So I needed to go back to the scraps bin and figure out what else I could use. I decided on a piece of plywood, but it was still too thick. So I made the sketchiest table saw cut known to man. Once I had my thin piece, I tried using my hand plane to smooth out the inconsistencies in the cut. After a while, I realized that I was no good with the hand plane and that I would likely end up ruining the piece. So rather than risk ruining my thin sheet and having to make that sketchy ass cut again, I came up with an amazing idea so good, so ingenious, and so well thought out that it couldn't possibly fail. This is gonna be the back. Another issue I had was that the router template I made was just a little too thin, so I made it thicker. Finally, I could start rough cutting the shape for the third and hopefully last time. Only this time, I had a trick up my sleeve to make it a little easier. I built this inverted jigsaw table using what archaeologists believe to be the first ever mass-produced jigsaw. Let's see how this goes. Third time's a charm, so they say. While it may not have looked so bad in the video, I spent hours trying to get the bezel just right, so I'm pretty happy that I've made it to this point of the video. And if you're still watching, thank you. If you're enjoying the video, be sure to subscribe so you can see more content like this. You can let me know you made it this far by commenting the word decorative down below. I attached the bezel to the enclosure using some super glue. Then I set it to the side so I could start soldering the power wires to the LCD. This is a pretty hacky way of doing it, but it'll get the job done. The HDMI to USB adapter wouldn't fit in the enclosure, 
So I had to trim the end of the USB cable so that I could bend the cable to a full 90 degrees. I then used a flexible HDMI cable to connect the display to the adapter. Finally, I could install the TPU feet that I printed. I have to say, it looks pretty good. If I were to do it over again though, I would have definitely tried to make it a bit thinner. That being said, I can finally multitask on my tiny desk, so it serves its purpose well. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for staying until the end. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss any future uploads. Also be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any future video ideas. I hope everyone has a great day, and I can't wait to see you all on the next one.